The Little Fox The doorbell downstairs rang. Pei Ling looked at the clock on the table. It was half past one in the afternoon. She answered, Who is it? Mommy, Xiao Ming called back. She had been waiting since noon for Xiao Ming's father to bring him home. Pei Ling deliberately waited a moment before opening the door. She had been divorced from John Ming for almost a year now. She still didn't want to see him again. He was late again in bringing Xiao Ming. She felt some old anger flare up. Outside the door stood only Xiao Ming. Pei Ling saw a shadow disappearing around the staircase. Zhong Ming was avoiding her also. Pei Ling looked at her son. Xiao Ming was wearing a new powder blue t-shirt with the English words Happy Meals. Xiao Ming was in his favorite jeans, which were washed white. The pant legs were an inch above his ankles. Was it possible that he had grown since she saw him three weeks ago, before the science convention? He had a new haircut. His tiny girlish chin looked even tinier. He was dragging a tiny droid with him, and his big eyes, which he had inherited from his father, looked vacant. I cooked your favorite dish, macaroni and cheese. You must be hungry, said Pei Ling. Xiao Ming walked silently with his mother to the dining table. He put his toy droid on the table. The macaroni was cold now. Pei Ling put Xiao Ming's plate in the microwave first. She was still mad at his father. Pei Ling and Zheng Ming had agreed on the phone that Zheng Ming would bring Xiao Ming to her home between 11 and noon that day. Xiao Ming was late by almost two hours. Pei Ling looked annoyingly at the macaroni. She had overheated it. The cheese on the macaroni was burned and dry. The corn on the side had turned into mush and was watery. The green peas were the color of olives. Pei Ling put the plate aside for herself, reheated her own plate, and put it in front of Xiao Ming. She looked at the overheated macaroni again and lost her appetite. You're not eating either? She watched Xiao Ming play with the macaroni. Daddy and I ate at the Chinese restaurant, Xiao Ming said. That was why Xiao Ming had been late. This meal had been meant for her and her son to eat together. Zhen Ming had done it again. He had never respected any agreement between them. She found that out right after they had gotten married. Pei Ling had wanted to finish her PhD first. They had agreed not to have children right away. One day they had gone to visit Zheng Ming's friend, and Zheng Ming had decided without asking Pei Ling that they would stay over. She hadn't been prepared to be with him that night. When she found out that she was pregnant, she knew that must have been the night Xiao Ming was conceived. At that time, her lab work had been at its most critical. If she had stopped working on it, she would not have been able to get back to that moment. Just because Zheng Ming had not cooperated, Xiao Ming had been born at the wrong time. Pei Ling dumped the macaroni in the garbage can. She looked at Xiao Ming's plate and dumped it as well. Come, look what mommy has brought you from Boston, Pei Ling said to her son. Xiao Ming carried the droid and followed Pei Ling to his room. The sun was shining through the lace curtain into Xiao Ming's bed. Xiao Ming had not slept on it for three weeks. On the bedspread, printed with Xiao Ming's favorite cartoon characters, was a brown teddy bear. It had big black bead eyes. Pei Ling lifted it up and gave it to Xiao Ming. Pei Ling had found the teddy bear in the gift shop at the Hilton Hotel, where her convention had taken place. Every time she had passed by, the bear had continuously grabbed her attention. She had finally gone in and bought it without even looking at the price tag. After she had returned to her room, she held the bear in her arms. She had felt lost, the same way she had felt after Xiao Ming was born. She remembered the first time that she had brought Xiao Ming a teddy bear. He had developed jaundice and had to be kept in the hospital. She had to come home without him, and when she returned home from the hospital and saw the empty cradle and the teddy bear she had bought for her newborn, she couldn't stop her tears. Pei Ling had turned on the television. The advertisement for the airline had been showing how a charming airline hostess was leading tourists to a plane. Pei Ling had remembered Zheng Ming's sister carrying Xiao Ming in her arms and disappearing into a door where the welcoming hostesses stood. She had wanted to yell out, Give Xiao Ming back to me! Give him back to me! But she had known she had to finish her PhD. She had to make a choice between her studies and Xiao Ming. 
One year and nine months after that, Paling's mother had brought Xiaoming back to the States, and also had attended her Ph.D. graduation. Paling's mother told her that Xiaoming had been living with Paling's mother-in-law. He had only been living with Paling's mother for a short while, so she would be able to return Xiaoming to Paling. Her mother had said, He hasn't been living with me for long, so he cried during the entire flight. Paling remembered her mother had sighed while she spoke. Paling had turned off the television. She had wanted to call Xiaoming, but he was living with her mother-in-law. She couldn't have called him any time she wanted. Paling had not slept all night. She had held on to the teddy bear and forced herself to close her eyes. She had needed to present a paper the next day. Now Xiaoming was sitting opposite her in his own room and was looking at a cartoon book of Star Wars. His long eyelashes were shading his pale face. Paling thought he should stay outdoors more often and play with the children his own age. Before the divorce, she had taken Xiaoming to preschool every morning herself. He had been able to play with children every day. Now he went to a regular school, and after school only Zheng Ming's mother, who did not speak a word of English, kept him company. Paling sat down beside Xiaoming and asked, Where do you want to go? Xiaoming did not answer. After a while, he lifted his head from Star Wars and said, San Diego Zoo. That's too far away, Paling said. If we drive there right now, we won't be able to see any of the animal shows. Xiaoming returned to his cartoon book. Next time, ask your dad to bring you early. We can go there for a whole day, Paling said. Let's go to the zoo by Highway 9. It's nearby. Xiaoming lowered his head again. He didn't seem interested in the small zoo. Last time they went there, they had only seen some monkeys, a black bear, a pair of cheetahs, and some tropical birds. We'll go to the zoo first, and then I'll take you to Shakey's. You like their pizza, right? said Paling. Xiaoming faintly smiled. He dragged the new teddy bear and followed his mother to the garage. Paling opened the car door and Xiaoming crawled into the seat beside her. The seat was full of papers. Go sit in the back, Xiaoming, Paling said. Daddy lets me sit in front, Xiaoming said. You know it's not safe. Children sit in the back. Xiaoming climbed over the seat and sat in his usual place. Paling backed the car out of the garage. She felt annoyed again. She had never allowed Xiaoming to sit in the front. This was so important for his own safety. Now she was not in control of everything. She drove down Highway 9. Cars were emerging from every entrance. The highway had been widened many times, and now it was going to be widened again. It would soon extend all the way to the foothills. Every time a new stretch of highway had been built, a new subdivision had appeared. She turned the radio to the classical music station. It was playing Vivaldi's The Four Seasons. She and Zhang Ming had married because of their mutual interest in classical music, but she knew now that music alone could not sustain a marriage. Outside the early summer sun was bright and warm, but she felt chilly. Paling stopped at the red light of an intersection. She turned around to look at her son. Xiao Ming had dozed off. His body was leaning against his new teddy bear, and his mouth was slightly open. The back corner seat was now occupied again by her son. The front seat and the back of the car were usually kept in a clutter, but the place for Xiao Ming was always kept empty. Now Xiao Ming was asleep. Two weeks go by so quickly, she thought. Xiao Ming was growing up fast. Pei Ling didn't dare think about the future. All she could do for the time being was to keep her job and spend time with her son. She drove past downtown and turned into a side road. She made another turn into the zoo parking lot. She stopped at the car, and Xiaoming woke up. The small parking lot was full. Two years ago, when she used to take Xiaoming there, the parking lot had never been full, and the zoo had few visitors. They joined the line in front of the entrance. A wide strip of cloth was hanging between two trees. On it, the words, Name Contest for the Little Fox of Highway 9. There was a crowd underneath the sign. There was even a guard in khaki uniform standing nearby. On a table stood another sign. The little fox of Highway 9 was found in an old pipe line near Highway 9. It was born very recently. 
Unfortunately, we couldn't find its mother or its siblings. It was, however, found uninjured. Please choose a name for him. The winner will receive a two-year free passport to the zoo, and his or her name will be printed in the local newspaper, as well as the little fox's new name. Paling saw people writing on pieces of paper and putting them into a box. On the table adjacent to the one where the box was stood a big metal cage, and in one corner was what looked like a handful of fuzzy gray hair. It was the little fox. Paling could barely see its head or its tail. Let's go see the other animals, Paling said to Xiaoming. Xiaoming would not budge. A young teenage couple walked up. The young man was sipping from a cup with a McDonald's logo printed on it. He said to his companion, Just call him McDonald's. They wrote the name down. They put the name in the box and walked away laughing. In front of Pei Ling and Xiao Ming was a family, a father and a mother and three young children. The father had on a tight shirt making his middle look like a sausage. The whole family was animated. Pei Ling could hear the word Zorro and call it little Zorro, said the father. The elder boy wrote the name on five pieces of paper while his proud parents looked on. A middle-aged couple walked up to the cage to see what the commotion was about. The man had a carrier on his back which was holding a baby girl. The mother was trying to get the baby girl, who had brown curls, to see the gray ball. Look at the little fox, she said. The baby jumped happily on her daddy's back. She looked at the cage for a minute, then returned to laughing and cooing at her mother. The couple left without writing any names down. Now Xiaoming could see the cage clearly. The little fox was still a ball of gray fuzz. She could not see its head or its tail. Two elderly ladies came, their white hair shining in the sun. One of the ladies complimented Xiaoming. What a pretty little girl! Xiaoming stared at the cage as if he didn't hear anything. He had been mistaken for a girl many times. Paling smiled back at the two older women and thanked them. Elsa, what a poor little fox! He lost his home and his mother at such a young age. Did you see the newspaper writing about him? The environmental group used it as a showpiece for their cause to stop extending Highway 9, and they even attracted news media. Look, it curled into a ball. It must have been frightened by the flashlights back then. Do you remember when these were all live oak groves? Now it is full of apartments and office buildings. The other lady said, Oak groves were the fox's homes. This little fox had no groves to hide and was born in a dry water pipe, and then he lost his mother. He was transported from the highway department to the Environmental Protection Agency, and then the zoo. What suffering! What a pity! Elsa agreed. Yes, yes, Pei Ling remembered now how scared Xiao Ming had been when she and Zheng Ming had gone to the airport to bring her mother and Xiao Ming home. Say mommy, say daddy, Pei Ling had heard her mother patiently urging Xiao Ming, but the big black eyes of the then two-year-old Xiao Ming looked so bewildered. Pei Ling's mother had stayed with them for half a year and then went back to Taipei. Pei Ling had needed to work. Xiao Ming had been sent to several child care centers. During this time, Pei Ling and Zheng Ming had become enemies. They had finally settled for divorce. The day they signed the legal documents, Pei Ling had gone from the lawyer's office to get Xiao Ming at the Montessori school. All of the other children had been playing ball in the yard. The teacher said that Xiao Ming hadn't wanted to play. Pei Ling had gone inside to look for him. She had seen him sitting still in the classroom. He had been holding a string of large wooden beads. He had been counting them like an old monk. Now Xiao Ming didn't want to leave the fox. He stared at the little ball of fuzz in the cage and began murmuring. Pei Ling listened carefully to his murmuring. Call him Xiao Ming, he whispered. He was holding onto the bars of the cage, calling softly to the ball of gray fuzz. This time Pei Ling heard him. She really heard. She bent down and held her son tight. The little gray fuzzball in the cage suddenly began to lift its head. It opened its big black eyes and slowly looked up at the mother and her son.